So tell me why private equity, you know, it feels like it's it's not Vanguard, right? It, 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 it feels like this is just not what we're used to associating with your firm. Tell us why you're making this big move. Yeah, so Vanguard is long, you know, our number one mission and primary purpose is to try to improve outcomes, as you mentioned, for the average ordinary investor. And private equity is actually, there's a strong investment case for private equity, but it's largely just been reserved for the very, very largest wealth pools. And so our approach, like it has been throughout our entire history, is try to bring world-class outcomes to the average investor. And so this is, is right within our game plan of our history. Right. So this initially will be provided to institutions, you know, pensions, endowments, foundations, as I understand it, by Vanguard, but with an eye towards qualified investors down the road. I, you guys must have done a ton of back testing. I mean, are, are the returns there for private equity if you're going to start saying that to people it can be part of your portfolio? Yeah, so we have great confidence. Uh, Vanguard has a long history of working with outside managers, and so our process of evaluating managers who can actually deliver alpha. So on the public side, the public equity market, that's how actually Vanguard started. People may think of us as indexing, but we actually started in active management and actually we're one of the largest active managers on the public side. And we think that the same thing can happen on the private side. So if you can identify world-class talent, like we think we have with HarborVest, we think there's a strong case for outperformance for investors. How much outperformance are we talking relative to stocks? What are the, the simplest way you can explain the numbers? Yeah, the simplest ways are there's two real components. One is an illiquidity premium, and I think uh, you, all you have to do is look at this week and see sure. illiquidity premiums everywhere on, on the run, off the run, um, and assets. So there is an illiquidity premium because private equity is illiquid. And so that is run at around 2 to 3% historically. And then if you can find a manager that can, you know, get in the top half um, of performance, you can easily get to 4 to 5% over public equity over a holding period. Wow. And so in a low return world and with bonds around 1%, uh, we think this is an incredible case uh, for inclusion into portfolios. Sure. And so maybe still a year or two or, or more away from, like I said, mom and pop accessing it, but you're going down that road. Fran, before we have to go, I want to ask you about something else that our audience may be very interested to learn, which is that Vanguard households uh, during this market sell-off including on, a, on Monday, one of the worst days that we've ever had, 77% of them who traded shifted into equities. What does that tell you? Yeah, so um, in addition to the private investments, um, my team and I long have studied investor behavior at Vanguard, and we've been early on this trend. We've been seeing over the last three to five years, not only at Vanguard, but the industry in general, the, their cash flow has been counter-cyclical, meaning that buying equities when equities are down we think this has a lot to do with the value of advice and how many people are using advisors, whether it be robo-advisors or single fund solutions like target retirement funds, and we're even being you know, educated on the you know, power of rebalancing. Yeah, well, like you said, you guys are always at the Vanguard and private equity is the next one. Thank you so much for joining me to explain it, Fran.